tell us in the comment. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. And today we are going to tackle a very interesting topic. And we have uh, some of the hardest working creative people in the industry. Today we shall take a closer look at what is called the gig economy and how its players are responding to the pandemic and the enhanced community quarantine. Our guests today are from the events management industry, the performing arts industry, and uh, these creative individuals have made their mark in different stages all over the country, in different performance venues, as well as uh, big uh, corporate events. Now, the gig economy is where people like us, me included, are, are where we get our livelihoods and uh, we've been around for quite a while. And because of the pandemic, all theaters, all gigs have been canceled. So that means to say there are no shows, no concerts, and definitely there's no income. So what does that leave us? Leave, where does this whole crisis leave the artists, event managers, producers, technical people, staging personnel, production assistants? Where does this leave all of us? But amidst this crisis, we will see that these creative individuals are responding very positively. And I'm so happy to have the following guests, especially in the performing arts and the events management uh, industry. Yes. Walang a take two. There's no... That's, when I we agree. go on stage, it's live, and we just have to make sure that everything goes on smoothly. And if there's any problems, us in the technical and performing group in the backstage, in the stage management, we have to solve our problems quietly. <laughs> and I know That's you understand. Right. That's right. And you have to soldier on whatever the givens and speaking of soldiering on whatever the givens don't you think that's very appropriate for what's happening to our industries right now the future is so uncertain there's so much fear and uncertainty and uh i read somewhere that there's nothing like a crisis of this magnitude on a global scale an unprecedented global scale to bring the world down to its knees and That's hopefully there. Tayo mga self-employed na wala pang trabaho at wala pang pumapak yes. na pera, you have to courage on and take heart because God is in control. Sabi nga, di ba, Tita Gracie, kung yung ibon nga sa Biblia, the sparrows are not uh, wary or afraid of uh, when their next meal will come, tayo pa na anak ng Diyos. So that's, that's the message true. that song wants to give. It's a message yes. of hope and yes. of courage that God is in charge. You know, Moy, I am like like yourself, I too am a Bible believing Christian and your words ring so true. You know, look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow, they do not reap. What more for us? We should not worry. We should really put our faith in the Lord and he is in control. And this too shall pass. Tama and the, mes the message of hope in that video is very strong. And I am so honored that the world uh, saw the video here on the show today. First so I, I think that there's the plan of the Lord is still there, you know, without um, uh, without us even, you know, thinking about this ahead of time. Uh, he's already there ahead of us. And... With the showing of that hallelujah video, I I want to convey to our fellow uh, gig economy uh, players that this too shall pass, and we're gonna make we're gonna have shows again. Our theaters will light up again. The stages will light up again because right now all the stages are on ghost light mode. Yes, thank you for opening that topic. There is this movement called Bayanihan Musikahan. It was the idea and brainchild of fellow com OPM composer Trina Belamide, and she enlisted uh, our national artist Ryan Kayabyab and also talent manager Gurley Rodis, and yeah. they they um, 
they aligned they aligned with uh agent b uh ngos basically what is it uh we are here to rally and uh rally all of the opm artists to perform at least one hour and all of and to ask for donations all of these donations will be properly accounted for and uh, they will be given to those who are most vulnerable sino po ito mga most vulnerable wag na tayong magpasikot-sikot pa uh, ito po yung ating mga urban poor the homeless uh the rural farmers who are suffering right now uh the people who uh are hungry basically so yes. this is our little way for the opm artist uh, to do something it feels wonderful it gives us a chance to perform to a global audience and it also gives our lives and our days significance because we get to do what we love doing to help the hungry you know uh moi it's so amazing that in a time of crisis and to think that our nation every year we are we were just rising up from the taal volcano eruption right and yeah. uh every year uh, the filipino nation undergoes every single natural calamity you can think of if it's not an earthquake it's a typhoon if it's not a typhoon it's a flood but still the heart of the filipino uh, to help kahit na last money na nagdo-donate pa rin. that's why i know that that the vehicle of a lot of these donations are the people in the arts to appeal to the hearts to the pockets of corporate philippines to the individuals who are able and fa- even even if it's just 100 pesos talagang magbibigay ang filipino para sa kapong pilipino na nagugutom o nangangailangan and at this time it's really something that uh, you know it it it's actions like that that bring our hopes up high and you know that we are a country of god fearing people because kahit pa paano talagang yung pagtulong sa kapwa natural sa pilipino yan eh because talagang laki tayo sa crisis every year i mean name it no since of course i'm probably older than <laughs> so talaga ang dami ko na ring crisis na nadaanan no and it's always something that's on stage something that we love arts eh. pinoys love music we love uh partying like in teddy's even party for a teddy you you encountered something like that before diba stay tuned for the next episode only here on v81 radio manila